you so much, everyone, for coming to Audio Drama Club's presentation of our audio play, Virgin Quest. We are now going to kind of open the floor up to a Q&A, so you can please, um, please put your any questions in the chat. Uh, if you can, you should be able to see right at the bottom, there's a little thing that says Q&A. Um, or you can kind of, I think you can raise your hand and you can ask a question verbally. All right, see, oh, we have, uh, already we've got a question uh, from Will. Uh, so he says, I think seeing your facial expressions, especially the Count, Marionetto, and Cordo, and Rob's one expression <laughs> added a ton to the comedy. To you guys, did it seem easier or harder than just doing a pure radio play? Um, I, in my opinion, it's harder than doing a pure radio play because there's just, you have to juggle a lot of irons of, keeping yourself muted and, you know, people's backgrounds and then internet might cut out. So this has been like a big challenge putting this on, but it's, it's been worth it. I totally agree with that. I would also say it might be even harder than something live, like an actual theater performance too, because yeah, technology is just so sucky sometimes. So it's definitely kind of the worst of both worlds. That and you don't know where to look because everybody's screen is in a different place, you know? And so when the dragon comes up here, and I say, it's the dragon! And then I had to look down there directly at the dragon since she's on the bottom of my <laughs> screen, you know? And there were, there were several rehearsals where uh, the count was way too funny for me to keep doing that one face. So even, so even, just the one facial expression was super hard to pull off. All right, looks like we've got another question from Joe, and she's asking what the writing process was like for this play. Um, we've got some of our writers are in the cast, some of our writers are in the audience. Um, I am also one of the writers, so I can start answering this question. Uh, we came up for this concept as a whole club together one year ago, so the spring semester of 2020. And we were thinking about what show we were hoping to put on that semester. So for those of you who don't know, the Audio Drama Club usually writes and then records and produces one full-length radio play each semester. So we were deciding what we wanted to, you know, how, what did we want to do? Do we want to do a comedy or drama? And we settled on, we were kind of hoping to do like a comedy with a fan fantasy twist. And so we started with the, you know, very classic tale of the town that lives under a mountain and needs to sacrifice gold and a virgin to a dragon. And then we said, well, wouldn't it be interesting then if we told this story from the perspective of the tax collector whose job that is? And then what happens when <laughs> nobody's left at the town that has never had sexual relations? So we kind of took that idea, we went from there and we came up with all these kind of kooky characters that our heroes might encounter and just had a really, really great time writing this script. It was so fun, it was such a blast. And then tragically, we all know what happened in spring of 2020 and we were all had to go home and disband before we were able to record or you know perform the show. So we had to kind of shelve it and then revisit it again this semester. Yeah, I, th I think, well, I think the most frustrating part is that we finished it. We had, we had like a finished draft by the end of, uh, like in the middle of spring semester, right? Right, like, a, what, what was it, like a week before COVID hit, right? I mean, we finished it up. Uh, and, and, we, and, we'd, and we'd spend hours, what we do is like every, uh, like every, I don't know, like Thursday-ish, we'd come into the student center and we'd all sit around this table uh, and we just take, uh, right on the whiteboard, just like scribble ideas and just throw shit at the board and just see what kind of stuck. Uh, and yeah, and, so, and, and eventually, uh, I don't know if Zach Palmer's in the audience, but uh, uh, one of our head writers uh, for that semester uh, came in and just kind of threw it all together into a script. Uh, yeah, it was, it was one of the reasons uh, why I stuck around in school. <laughs> You know. So that kind of answers um, Ryan's question uh, in the Q&A. Uh, so we've been working on this for almost a year. Um, we didn't work on it last semester. We were focused on a different show that we were writing and recording. So we came back to it this semester, really dove into it uh, and to kind of answer Ed's question as well. 
we how many hours have we we did some revisions on the script we had auditions and then every single week uh during our club time we meet every friday from you know for about three hours on friday evening so every one of those uh once we had the script polished up and we had our cast we spent on rehearsing this with the voice actors we spent on the sound editors figuring out the sound effects um which leads us into our next question with uh from leah she says, you guys did such a wonderful job with sounds lining up, especially given Zoom. How do you guys make sure things like that work? So to someone from the sound team, Jesse, Devin, Marcus, Zoe, you want to take that one? Yeah, so pretty much it was all about um, court coordination, um, rehearsal, basically. And we go off of um, cues and like when and when um, people read their lines and it's just mainly just practice and stuff like that. And Jesse could pretty much add on to that. Yeah, so this whole semester trying to bring this show back was kind of a process. At first we were thinking that we were going to record it, present it live or present it as a fully done radio show and not do it live because of COVID and stuff. But with how much uh, extra time and everything that would have taken we decided to just go ahead and try it doing it on zoom live and cutting in sound effects that we had from a library uh, what we ended up doing was just uh, following the script uh, line by line and finding and layering sound effects that um, fulfilled whatever was written in the script and named each file that we ended up bouncing as like the page number and line number so that everyone on uh, the audio team, uh, we could all just like take a scene and just go down like a OneDrive file, uh, everything mostly in order. For some reason today, Microsoft decided, you know, seven comes after 12 or something like that. Anyway. So that was a fun little hiccup that we had, of course, on the day of performance and at no other point in time. Um, but, you know, trying to keep all those different things in mind and uh, coming up with the music was a challenge that I had no idea how to conquer. And then Annika really like came through and like kicked ass coming up with a bunch of music that we had throughout the play and really, really saved my ass on that front uh, of things. But uh, that, that was probably the biggest hurdle. And then, you know, keeping everything organized so that anyone uh, on the audio team could play things in live and keep track of it with the script and the show um, just made it so even if you missed a couple of rehearsals or whatever, um, Zoe on the audio team couldn't make any of our normal weekly rehearsals. So we had a few outside of normal club time and like over the weekend uh, where she got to familiarize herself with the effects. She also helped making some of the effects and everything as well. Um, but like Marcus said, it's just kind of rehearsing from that point. As long as everything is organized and easy to navigate for everyone that's in there, no matter what the level of experience with it is, you know, that's half, half the battle right there. And the other half is just the rehearsals, which thankfully we got to do. And that was like the one thing that made Zoom a little easier to coordinate, especially as a student that commutes. Uh, I didn't have to worry about going downtown for any and every appointment that mm -hmm. we had to have to get everyone up to speed on the same thing. And Lance Mullins then asks if this was originally planned, always planned to be on Zoom, or was there a different idea originally? So we actually, if we were all in person, if there was no pandemic, the Audio Drama Club at Manifest every year actually does perform like live in person. We're on a stage, we've got microphones, we've got a Foley table, we've got a soundboard to make sound effects, and we perform the radio play completely live. So that was the original plan, which is why we wrote in some like visual effects, like obviously Marionetto, character Marionetta played by Annika, only has one line, doesn't speak for the rest of the show. So that was something that, you know, you, you can't really, you can't hear nothing. Uh, you can't hear a mute character um, in an actual radio play. So we were always kind of planning to do this in some sort of performance of the visual aspect. We just didn't think it was going to be uh, like this. So we had to really shift gears um, this year to figure out exactly how we wanted to make this work. We had a couple questions about costumes as well. So how was the process of making costumes handled? And what was the effect of the costuming? Um, 
None of these were made. Well, some of them were, I guess. Some of them were taken from people's houses. Uh, Columbia College Chicago is really generous with uh, their, with the clubs. Yeah, everyone show off your hats. Columbia College is quite generous with the kind of the funding that is given to student organizations. So we had money in our account that is funded by Columbia College Chicago that we use to purchase um, all like the little hats and everything for people. And we didn't have most of them until this dress rehearsal. So we actually did not see uh, the finished product until like literally today <laughs> we did our dress rehearsal before the show but we you know uh, Valencia who I think is in the audience is our wonderful illustrator she's an illustrator and she's part of our club and she did a lot of drawings and sketches that she'd been working on over the whole year of the different characters we were able to really kind of picture the characters based on her drawings you can see some of them on the poster and just also kind of like on what the characters themselves were parodying like obviously joanna is a bit of a parody of like you know mythical like you know the witch galadriel alcafat's a parody of a dumbledore or gandalf type so we were able to kind of easily um picture that jordan asks if all theater majors are this pretty is anyone here actually a theater major <laughs> Oh, okay, okay, never mind. Man, we all man, we all got beauty, man. You don't have to be a theater major to got beauty. No, actually, I do believe you have to be a theater major to be attractive. <laughs> oh, uh, I'm pretty sure that's the only prerequisite. <laughs> Straight up. See, I'm not a theater major, and that's why I'm unattractive. <laughs> <laughs> Audio major and double to that. <laughs> I mean, we, I mean, we do music, so like, it's not they see us anyway. Suddenly, listen, suddenly, listen. Uh, the the suddenly, uh, the theater department has a lot more applicants. <laughs> Everyone is beautiful in their own way. Thank you, Alcafat. I, I don't know if I trust it coming from Alcafat. I don't yeah. know where that's coming from. <laughs> Thank you, Dumbledick. As you all can see, I guess this kind of answers uh, one question about kind of how Zoom affected our dynamic as a group. Um, really, thankfully, we had a really great time uh, rehearsing over Zoom. We all have, we obviously have like a very easy rapport. Um, we've spent probably far too much time arguing about whether Shrek or Poe would win in a fist fight. Um, not, not to bring that back up. Um, we definitely have a lot of fun together. Obviously, it would be a lot more, you know, there, we'd be a lot closer probably if we were all in person, but I think we've done a great job under the circumstances of keeping in touch and having a great time in rehearsals. Um, hope, hopefully everyone agrees. Hopefully it's not just me having a good time. I will say truly, uh, if this show doesn't speak enough for it, this might just be the funniest group of people you will ever see behind closed doors. Uh, we have, I think almost the entire improv clubs board on this cast. And I don't think there was ever a lull in the comedy that happens off screen. I think at worst, the energies levels hit like a seven out of 10. So I, I think this was a thing a lot of people look forward to on Friday nights to come and uh, just kind of do funny voices and read some things. Yes, and the Improv Club does have a little show at 7.30 p.m. You can find that on the same Manifest website where you found the link to this show. Do a little plug for them with Cordo, Ard, Rob. Um, oh, I'm missing somebody. Who am I missing? I, uh, you're not. You're not missing anyone. Okay. The show or is it more of an open thing? You know. Oh it's, yeah, it's our it's our final meeting of the year is tonight. Yeah. But it, it's still gonna be very fun. It's still gonna be very fun, and guys, you guys should come because it'll be a fun time. Mm -hmm. And this will. This is the only showing of the show that we're gonna be doing live. However, it's been recorded. And we also are hoping to actually like turn this into a proper audio drama um, and, you know, put all the sound effects in digitally and really polish them up and make them sound really good. So that will be on our, probably on our club's YouTube channel or SoundCloud account. You can search for CCC Audio Drama Club on most of um, you know, social media platforms. So Instagram, there's a group on Facebook. Um, we have our YouTube account, which we just started. So we're going to be putting audio dramas there. And SoundCloud, we've got some previous audio dramas from previous years. We've got a, this is kind of a fun question. Uh, Will asks, this seems like either really good casting or really good acting because everyone seems so natural in their roles. But if you had to play a different character, who would you have wanted to play? Ard's girlfriend. <laughs> Would have loved to. I was just about to say our girlfriend. 
<laughs> Guys, I know everyone wants to be my girlfriend. Stop. Oh, no. Never mind. Uh, Vernessa. No. I thought it was funny. Never mind. Not, an honor only one can have. So I, I originally um, auditioned for the count. It was like one of the ones I auditioned for. And then I saw our count. I went, that's why I'm not playing that character because I'm never going to be that good. So I'm like, eh. <laughs> I'm just happy to be here. I'm right there with you. <laughs> Truly, the only I think the only character I auditioned for willingly was the Count. And then we got brought back, uh, Claire and I, and they're like, hey, what is your voice for this? And then I just went way up here into my nose, and now I'm a crab. Now he is a crab. That, and that kind of also brings us right to the question about whether or not we do like a casting call or we only cast within the club. So usually the majority of our cast is made up of club members, but we do allow people from everywhere to audition. We just generally, these people have, are, they've seen the show from its infant stages until, you know, the final draft and, you know, they're the ones who really want to be part of it and who are, you know, going to audition. So we just, most of our auditionees end up being from within the club, but we've brought some, we brought some kind of some new people in this semester. We, a lot of new people, actually, a lot of the people of this cast weren't here last semester. So uh, it was super awesome to bring all these new people on and it made the club just, you know, that much more fun. So we hope, hope you guys stick around. To the count, are you ever tempted to use the count voice at random times in public? <laughs> I had this question coming, good lord. <laughs> All the time. I was rehearsing at work today and just found myself kind of slipping into it as I was ringing customers up. Uh, so yes. Oh, for sure. Yes. Amazing. And then Ard. Was Ard, this is an interesting a story question. Was Ard planned to be the sacrifice from the very start of the writing process or did that, that idea come later on? As I know, well, uh, I think I got the role and they were like, I think we need to kill this character. I think that's what happened. Um. Yeah, Art actually lives. We were just going to kill the whole cast. That was going to be the end. But then we were like, oh my God, this Shelby, you know, we, we got to gotta get rid of her. I like um, chick. No, the art, the art twist we came up with, I think probably about in the middle of the writing process uh, or towards the end, definitely not from the beginning. We weren't exactly sure um where the story was going when we came up with the idea we kind of started you know just throwing out ideas so our the art twist from what i remember it was a year ago but i don't believe came until you know we kind of got there the script and we're like dang who is going to be sacrificed we decided to break the fourth wall and pull art in there and from that decision, we had to go back and make a couple instances where you saw Art interact with them. So it wasn't just a random fourth wall break at the end. And we had to make that kind of linear. Um, so with that decision came some other minor tweaks and changes to the script, like um, the forest scene where Bert tells him, hey, nothing like none of that happened. You're making stuff up, whatever. That was all stuff that we kind of did that to almost give you an idea of what could happen since art could directly interact with the cast and the story and uh we've got a question what will the club be doing in the fall yes we yes we have some of the writers of our semester's next show here I in can the answer that one. hello my name is Devin McNerland. I'm the head writer uh, of the Audio Drama Club. And I would like to tell you tell you uh, some amazing news. We have a finished draft of our pirate adventure. Great time. It's a lot of fun. Uh, and uh, next semester, uh, the club will be putting that together. So if you guys uh, would like to uh, join and be a part of a, a pirate adventure, and with a little bit of romance in there, uh, feel free to audition, you know? Uh, we do a lot of great things in this club. Uh, while that is being uh, recorded, uh, we always love to uh, bring you on to help write us a brand new uh, screen, uh, I guess audio drama, a brand new audio drama, uh, which not many people get to do. Uh, 
one thing that I always love about Audio Drama Club is that when I came to the school, I wanted to, to use the, uh, the motion capture studio and do wild adventures and cool things that never got to happen. One thing that you get to do in audio drama is make the wildest shit. And you can do it because it's free. <laughs> because you don't have to pay thousands of dollars. So uh, next semester, uh, we will uh, be writing a brand new audio drama headed by our brand new uh, head writer, Karina. Thank you for uh, joining us around this semester. Uh, and I will be heading out, but I will be watching from the sidelines. Very excited to see what you guys create. Uh, if you guys would like to uh, come join the Audio Drama Club next semester, we have a Facebook group. We have a, an Instagram. We have a YouTube. We have all sorts of things. Uh, so we look forward to having you next semester. And uh, I'm, I'm excited to see what you guys create. Because this is kind of sad for me. <laughs> That's all. Yeah, some of us are yeah, some of us are leaving, so we definitely gonna need some soldiers here. We're gonna need some soldiers. <clears throat> so come on, so come on out, come try out. You're gonna have a crap ton of fun. And because we're already on our way out right now, we don't face any consequences. So the question was, who is the biggest diva on set? <laughs> I think uh Aiden has the answer to that one. <laughs> I was gonna say, Aiden <laughs> makes a point of pointing it out every single club. Yeah, I mean Shelby's just like it's uh, like it's like you. We get it. Like you're you're like the. Can narrator, someone give me the power, so like, please? I would like the power to be. I would like the power to be Aiden. That. We get that, but like come, like you don't have to like throw it in our face all the time. I'm know? gonna say it's Aiden. Oh, no, like, I'm gonna say it's Aiden. Th this you know, question like, is asked to nearly every rehearsal, just so you get into the idea. Sleeper pick, Travis. <laughs> what do I do? <laughs> exactly. I, I'm still pick. staunchly anti Shelby, but yeah, Travis. Travis can get there. Travis can get there. One hundred percent. Not gonna lie, it's only based off the one incident, but I'm inclined to say Peyton because of the whole Shrek versus Poe thing. Oh, I am. Yes. Yes. I'm Albert very much <laughs> drama queen. I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna say drama. it because no one else will. Annika. <laughs> Annika, oh my god, Annika. Ooh. I'm kidding. Ooh. Stop, stop, you've turned us all against each other. Oh. Just to be a family. Hold on. I also have a question about Bert. Uh, where did you get the inspiration for Bert? Um, I think this is a question for Bert himself. So was there anyone you based your character off of or how did you kind of read that? It so I'm a big Star Wars nerd, and Bert was described as very sarcastic and kind of just done with everything. And the character that most seems like that in the original trilogy is Han Solo, so I did a little bit of that in there. Uh, this is actually the shirt from, uh, I, I'm a big nerd, so I have a costume of it. So this is the Han shirt uh, from that costume, so. No yeah, fast? No, when we fuse, we form Han Solo. That is our gimmick. That's why I don't have a shirt on and just have the vest. He is right. Which of you is the legs? I thought you were. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I'm the third part of the fuse. I forgot. <laughs> and the blue pants with the stripes on the side. Come on, man. Is this, yep, is yep. this uh, like Transformers uh, style fusion or Yu-Gi-Oh? No, Power Rangers, like Power Voltron, Rangers. where we all form together. Mm -hmm. It looks like the only question we have left is, uh, why does Shelby uh, suck so much? Would anyone like to answer that question? <laughs> why does- How about Shelby? Can Shelby answer that question? <laughs> Yeah, please, Shelby, please. I would like to defend Shelby. I don't <laughs> think she's that bad, guys. We yeah. love you, Shelby. And we love oh, everybody who friend. came to see this show. Um, thank you so much for everyone coming. We're running out of time. So just wanted to kind of give a round of applause to our amazing cast. Shelby Steele as Ard the Bard, Annika Zomerman as Marionetto. Ben Blondie as Bert, Andrew Segura as Cordo, Alice Horton as Joanna, Emily Safko as Burness, Henry Smallstick as Brandonowin, 
Ben Clarkson as the Count, Aiden Beasley as Rob, Peyton J as Crab 2, Claire, oh, I'm, I'm going to say your name wrong, Claire Lofstutter as, as Crab 1, uh, Devin McNairland as Eunice, uh, Rochelle Mendoza as the Dragon, Ian Albrocht as Alka Fott, and Travis Flock as Ard's girlfriend. You guys were amazing. So happy to have you here. And I am so proud of this show that we did. I was so, um, so blessed to be your director. Thank you also to our club sponsor, George Czar, who is in the audience. Um, yeah, George rocks. You are the best. And we're so happy to have you. Thank you also to Zach Palmer, who is also in the audience and was the head writer on this show. Um, wasn't able to be a part of the production this semester, but we're still really happy that, you know, this, you, you helped us bring this show to life. Um, thank you again to everyone in the audience and have a wonderful rest of your Friday evening and a wonderful rest of your really summer. Really quick, oh. it looks like Joanna got one more Joanna? question about her accent. Uh, it says, have you always had that accurate of a British accent? Thank you. Or did you have to develop it for the show? Mm -hmm. Um, I, 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 I've, I can do a British accent just in general. I'm just sort of like in my life, I like to collect accents and do different accents. Um, call it the accent queen. I mean, yeah, that, she is the, like any accent that we've had to do. Alice always just pulls one out. And we're like, well, that's, yep, that's, that's it. That's how it goes. <laughs> Instantly cast. <laughs> Thank you very much. Auditioning um, is going to be difficult. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. I, oh, wait a minute. Oh, and yeah, I also, I want to give a shout out to the audio team. We've got it in the chat. Jesse Healy, who is our lead editor on this. Uh, Marcus Black, Zoe Maddox, Devin McKinley. Um, you guys rock. You guys rock. You do all the things that none of the rest Henry of us. Henry Small Stig helped no, us. No, out. no, I don't yeah, count. Henry. I don't count. I just play Throw Annika in there. Guys have the audio. Annika, Annika did hello yes. work. Yes, Annika counts. I don't. Annika was amazing. George, you're among us. Maybe. I'm a sauce. Among it's us. Very sauce. Among us. Among us. Among us. Among us. I think George vented, guys. <laughs> Emergency meeting. <laughs> Rob's got it. <laughs> what are you guys doing the show again? <laughs> All right, George. Is there anything the you'd like to say, George, before we uh, before we end this meeting? Nicely done. Nicely done, guys. That's really difficult to do that with uh, on Zoom. I mean, I've been part of these things when it was, you know, you were able to do it in front of an audience with mics and, you know, live Foley and everything. You, you solved a lot of problems doing this. You were like being, you know, pretty much like trailblazers in this because it's a new way to try it. I mean, see what you can do. See what further stuff you can do. I heard from a few other people who saw it. And they, they said they really were impressed. They liked it very much. So thanks. So pat much. yourselves on the back, you know. Look, my face is totally faded. I'm so amazed. I mean, <laughs> I don't know what's with the lights here. Anyway, guys, people who are graduating, go for it. Excellent. People who aren't, you got another year of it. <laughs> Hang in there. Uh, have a good summer. I was really happy to be your uh, your advisor. I tried to stay out of your faces and make that, you know, you guys make it your own. It's easy to get in there and start putting your footprint on stuff. And I didn't want to do that. Uh, Rochelle knows I was doing that in class, but you know, that's a whole other deal. <laughs> and there's my class behind me. So, all righty, guys, nicely done. Continue your talk. You can go back to what you were saying. Usually when Thanks you break so into much. these things, you hear people just in the middle of saying something horrible and then they go, oh, oh, it's Mr. Zard. Oh, you know. <laughs> I know. I, I did the same thing when I was in school. All right. Take it easy, guys. Nicely done. George, Nicely been, done. Thank you. George, George. It's George. been an honor uh, meeting you, my man. Oh, really? Get a life. <laughs> so. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, See, that, honor, look, take, look. honor taken back. <laughs> look at I'm in New York. I'm sounding like it already. Oh, my God. Yeah, I know. That's... <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I'm not, man. No, no good, good. I was, very, I was very impressed. It was really neat because, like I said, I saw the very beginning and then I saw it later. I felt bad because I couldn't get my screen. My dad, George Czar, right in the middle of all your stuff. And I was going like, what, what am I doing up there? 
<laughs> oh, the audience can't see if um, if your camera and mic is off. Oh, is that true? That's how we pulled all of this off. That's how you only I saw see. the people so, who so were talking the whole time. <laughs> Secrets no, of the really industry. Well. Did really well. Um, Santa, have a nice uh, or <laughs> Gandalf or whoever that is up there. Okay. Have a nice, have a nice summer, everybody. Keep it real, George. Send that sentiment to everyone in the club and everyone in the audience. Have a wonderful rest of your summer. Thank you for joining us on this Virgin Quest. Have a wonderful rest of your evening. I love you, Shelby. I'm sorry. Bye. <laughs> Bye, everyone. This is it. I'll never forgive you, Aiden. <laughs> I'll be left. Bye. Keep it real, y'all. Space Cowboys. On